Hello and welcome to Hire Results, where business, workforce, and talent intersect. I'm Melody Reagan, CEO of Eye to Eye Workforce and your host. Thank you for joining us for another episode today. We're going to continue in our series on recruiting techniques and tools. And today we're going to be talking about the first 90 days and onboarding. Throughout our series, we've talked about the recruitment funnel. Starting at the top of the funnel, it's all about employer branding, sourcing, getting those candidates to come in, using all of the tools that we have. That's the big part of the funnel. Coming down through the funnel with our job, we have candidates that apply, we qualify, evaluate, interview them, and make that selection, and we move to hire. And at the very bottom of the funnel is where we do the onboarding. Onboarding is something that historically in recruiting, we actually ignored. We didn't realize how important it is, but yet it is a critical thing to do to ensure that all the investment that we have made in bringing this worker on, that we're going to have a positive result. I'm going to share a couple of statistics with you as to why, and this is a really important part of your process, and it's at the very bottom of the funnel. So we are coming through at the end. Now, why onboarding matters? Why it matters is this, retention, turnover, productivity, engagement. Well, that matters all across the board, doesn't it? When we think about the life cycle of a worker, retention, we want to minimize turnover because it's so expensive. We want our workers to be engaged and highly productive. Well, guess what? Um, one in five employees actually leave their jobs within the first 45 days. Surprising, about 20%. Also, in a study of over a thousand workers, this was by Bamboo HR, 31% reported having quit a job within actually the first six months. So it kind of gets worse. On average, it costs about 21% of an employee's annual salary to replace them. But here's what I want you to know. And when you are thinking about onboarding and great onboarding, 69% of employees are more likely to stay with a company for three years if they experience great onboarding. It really does matter. The other one is organizations with poorly handled onboarding are twice as likely to cause new hires to seek new opportunities in the very near future. Something that none of us want. We just put all of that expense in. And by the way, it cost us thousands and thousands. It cost us in the recruiting process all the way through to getting them hired, whether it's an hourly worker or not. We put a tremendous amount of investment in our recruiting processes. Anyway, 54% of companies with onboarding programs, this is another fantastic thing, um, report higher employee engagement. I'm going to share with you why. There are some pretty serious reasons why. So one of the questions that I do get from time to time is, it's really 90 days. 90 days, we always talk about the first 90 days. That's really a thing of the past. And depending on what state you are in, if it's a work for hire, it's an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, 90 days really has no legal relevance or anything. It's about how fast is it that it takes for you to get that worker up and running and to be effective in their job. And different jobs have different periods for getting up and running. So it's really about your company and the position as to what the relevant period is. For some, it might be 30 days. For others, it actually might be six months. So it does matter that you're calibrating to your company and you're calibrating to the position. Now, one of the things that we have all naturally done is we've naturally done orientation. And orientation and onboarding are two different things, and I actually consider orientation part of onboarding. Orientation, and I really do um, like this as far as a reference, is orientation is the focus, is the role of the company, the duration. It typically is like a one-time event. It's typically set up in a classroom, and we say classroom, webinar, whatever. It's, it's more instructor style where we're sharing a ton of information. Um, it's really more of a big picture. We do cover mission. We cover what are core policies. And we also use orientation as our moment to get individuals to complete paperwork that they haven't previously completed. And now they're ready to move into their position. Well, onboarding is actually different. Onboarding is all about process. 
And it's about the person's role in the department and the position that they have taken on. It is a process, which means it's a sequence of events. And the other thing is, it is meant to really get them integrated into the company and into their position. The content of onboarding is also individualized, whereas in orientation, it's not. It tends to be that bulk general here, let's bring in a group. And the outcome of this is we're looking for people to be ready to contribute. You know, hit that ground running because by the time we're actually hiring, ironically, we needed that person yesterday. It's so funny, but that's the way it goes. It's like by the time they're walking in the door, we can hardly breathe. Please come on and let's get you going as fast as we can. Now, the purpose of onboarding coming through with this that really does matter is it's a process that helps new hires to do a couple of things. And for you to keep this in mind, it helps them to acclimate to the new company. What does that mean? And why is that important? Well, it's important, you know, have you ever gone out and made a really big purchase and all of a sudden had buyer's remorse? We're all very different and what we want to do in this tight competitive market is we want to validate that new hire's decision to join us. So it, part of the purpose is let's just make sure that we're acclimating them and embracing them and that they feel good about the decision that they've made to join us. The other thing is we want to immerse them in the organization. For most businesses, we spend the most amount of money on our workers. Um, that's where our big dollars go. What we want is we want that new hire to connect in and become as productive as rapidly as possible. The other thing that it does, and this is a point where we get ourselves into mistakes, is it creates connectivity between the work group and whatever that natural work group is. Because one of the things that I always go back to and I say to everybody, have you ever thought about what a job is? Job is a couple of things. Um, and more, but here are the three things I always remind people of. What's one of the first questions you get asked when you're meeting somebody? One of the first things they ask you after you've made the introduction is, hey, what do you do? Well, a job is part of our identity. A job is a way that we make money, keep a roof over our head, and it matters because obviously we need money to live. We have to have that exchange to have a home or have a car and buy food. And the other thing is we spend half of our waking time at a job. So it is actually our community. We build bonds with the people that we work with. So it's really important. And along those lines, creating those work group connections so that a person feels like they belong really matters. The other thing is setting and clarifying expectations in the job in the first 90 days. This becomes a disconnect um, all too often that I see. You get a new worker, they think they're doing a good job, they think that they're executing on X and Y, and the manager or supervisor really wants them to execute on A and B. So this is that opportunity to get clear calibration. It also um, is the opportunity, and what you want to focus on, is immersing that new hire into their job. And sometimes with that job, you do have to do training. It might be systems that they're using. It might be processes. Each company has different ways of doing things. So make sure that you're immersing the, position, the person in the position. And the other part of that, just because I may have been in a similar role in a different company, ironically, company to company, the span of control varies. So making sure that that person knows what... project manager or a developer or a sales rep or an accounts payable clerk, whatever the position, the boundaries of those positions varies by company. The other thing that it does is it allows them to create and to develop that set of resources. And resources might be tools, go-to people, um, it, it could be physical, it could be online. It, it is a whole variety of things because we don't work by ourselves. We have computers. We have go-to places for information and knowing what that is. And what I love about onboarding, even though I have this covered up at the moment, is that it truly creates a connection for our new hire to the company-wide goals and their day-to-day -day responsibilities. So it's not that generic. It is about the individual. Now, how-tos for onboarding. 
And one thing that you want to do as a company, we all have different cultures, is determine if you want a formal or an informal process. And it does matter. And it needs to fit your culture. I will tell you that I tend, probably a little bit in the middle, I tend to have a checklist that I set up for onboarding and I do checkpoints. And um, specifically, I actually create key tasks with deliverables, and we do this for many of our clients, um, and we set up a schedule. And one of the things about onboarding that a lot of companies and leaders don't think about is you can start onboarding before the person actually comes on board. So get ahead of the curve, because you want them to hit the ground at running and get them um, effective as fast as possible. Think about what you can do on a pre-employment basis. Make their first day special. Embrace them. Um, what we tend to do is set up like first 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. And um, what we cover in our key task and deliverables is we tend to cover things, and these are our categorical groupings, is we cover schedule, job duties, and expectation. So that people know, you know, we all have different schedules of where we're working. Are we on site? Are we remote? What are my duties? What are the expectations of good performance? And I'm um, setting up for a brand new employee that says, these are the things that you're going to accomplish in the first 90 days or first 30 days or first, um, you know, who knows, 120 days, whatever is right for that position. Um, what is it that you will have accomplished so that we know we have a great fit, that you are the right person for this job and we're the right company for you. Socialization really matters. And what are you doing to get that person into the connective tissue of your business? Work environment, telling them um, what are some of the things about the work environment, and I'm gonna share more about that in a second. Um, technology. Everything's getting digitized, automated. We have all kinds of tools. Making sure that our new hire has appropriate technological access and all the tools that they need to get their job done and that we are providing sufficient training and development. And as we've covered in other shows, training and development is going up and that most companies spend over $1,000 and on average, 34 hours a year in training. Well, you know, when somebody is coming in new, think about all the things that they have to learn. They are, even though they've done their homework in the hire, they have to learn about the company, mission, vision, values, so that they truly embrace that. Then they have to come through and understand what the boundaries of their jobs are, their, their job is, the processes around that job, the interaction with their team members, their pro boss's preferences. So make sure that you're spending time on training and development. Don't just assume that they're going to know what they need to do. So I'm giving you a sample schedule because I want to highlight pre-employment because this is one that we often overlook. This is a sample schedule. Um, on pre-employment and looking at it, we start off with schedule and job duties. Now, we haven't moved to expectations. So first off, um, once you get to that higher, we actually like um, to have the employee be called by their supervisor. Um, you know, and it could be supervisor, it could be HR, but we actually like to engage the supervisor before they come on board. The other thing that we like to do is um, make sure to, that you got all the relevant letters. We actually provide some of the things that classically used to be in um, orientation. We provide that earlier. Um, we let them know here it's giving them the application, things that they need to complete, get that paperwork to them in advance. Um, make sure that they are set up with appropriate logins and getting their exchange calendars. The other thing that we do is we confirm start date, time, place, parking, and believe it or not, dress code. A lot of people come from different environments, letting them know these things in advance, getting a copy of the employee manual to them after, of course, they've signed the paperwork to say they are going to be joining your team. 
Um, the other thing is for some of our clients, um, we encourage them to set up an onboarding buddy. Now, sometimes that onboarding buddy is actually their supervisor, but depending on the schedule, there may be somebody else within the department or somebody that is a key member that they work with, just so they have a built-in go-to person. And saying hello and greeting them before they walk in, I can tell you makes a huge difference. The other thing is, if there are regular department meetings, we go ahead and get them set up and we add them to the calendar so that they know right when they come in, these are our regular team meetings, department leading meetings, company-wide meetings. Like um, at one of my companies, we have a regular team meeting every Monday morning. So new hires automatically get added to our regular Monday morning meeting. The other thing that we do is knowing that they're coming in for the first two weeks is let's just make sure that we have key events set up in their schedule. And part of the key events that I would really recommend is make sure on the first day that the supervisor and or the team takes your new hire out to lunch or has a little bit of a gathering. Um, and the other thing is start planning for what their, super, their first assignment is. Don't let them walk in the door and say, oh, we're gonna figure out what you're doing. Get organized, because if you want them to hit the ground running, um, set it up so that they can quickly. Now with socialization, um, this is something, socialization is on two sides. We, are, we frequently think that onboarding is just about our new worker, but guess what, it's not. It's also about our existing team members. Have you ever been in a situation where all of a sudden, Some functional areas of the new hire and tell them a little bit about them. Let them know, um, you know what their start date is and what they're going to be doing. Some of the individuals who've already been involved in hiring will know them, but others won't. So make sure that you do that. The other thing is go ahead and pre-prepare. You want them to be effective? Go ahead and set up critical uh, people meetings, those individuals that they're going to work with on a regular basis that are really important. We all have crazy busy schedules. So if you go ahead and prepare that, then you've got a new worker who's coming in that they don't have to wait two weeks to get on critical individuals calendars. It's already set up. They're right there. Um, I've already talked about first lunch, lunch, lunch. It really is important in the, uh, the uh, socialization process. It really makes a difference. You don't have to take a full lunch, but you know, even getting everybody together in a little round robin and saying hello of that natural work group and letting them see faces and have everybody tell each other something about one another, what their roles are goes a long way. And arrange a walkabout, show them the facility, show them um, desk space, et cetera. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that and a couple of mistakes that people make, but make sure that they get a little bit of the lay of the land or have the materials to understand depending on how big your facility is. Now on work environment, one of the things that you can do is you can go ahead and start giving them um, prepackaged like the welcome letter name. I've already talked about this. If there's parking, get their parking pass to them in advance make sure that they know what is going on. And if you have someone who is moving from another city, go the extra mile, show them about things that are in the neighborhood or get them connected to resources of their new city. It will totally help them with acclimating. So it's not just about their job, it's about getting them settled and moving forward. Um, this is one that is a big, big mistake all too often. And when we're growing, we can't always keep up with our space needs. Make sure that you have a place for that person to, if you will, hang their coat. Um, where they come in, get them into a clean work area um, so that they know, let them know where coffee's at, just some of the basic things. It's interesting. When I was in corporate America and we used to take over companies or build out new divisions, one of the first things that we would do in our integration and bringing in new employees is we always made sure that the basics were taken care of. And this sounds crazy, but it really makes a difference for people. We'd make sure that we had appropriate things stocked in the galley, um, making sure in terms of bathrooms, paper towels, all that wonderful stuff, just having the basics, it's amazing when you don't have that, the impact that it can have on your workers. So make sure that they know where things are at, 
and take care of um, those items in advance as much as you can where you've set up their workspace, let them know that they'll have a computer. Ideally, they'll have that there on the first day. Order business cards. You can have them approve it in advance so they can hit the ground running. Um, the other thing is anything where they need to be added to email lists that are going on, obviously you'll get their email and their phone set up, right? Um, computers, software, um, have IT contact them. And they can do this in advance or whoever is handling your infrastructure can take care of that. Make sure that they've already been set up with authorizations. How cool would it be for you to walk in and already have a sheet of here's all your systems, these are your logins, so you can immediately go through and you can change your passwords and you are up and running on day one. So a little pre-planning and doing this in advance makes a massive amount of difference. The other thing is um, schedule their orientation. Orientation is normally on the very first day, sometimes the second. Um, and then the other thing is any trainings that you have, like if they need to meet with individuals, critical individuals, um, having their calendar already booked for the first two weeks High five makes a world of difference. It also helps you get that employee working faster. Um, important to note, um, one of the things that I want you to consider, consider onboarding milestones and tasks. And one of the things that um, we think is a really important relationship, obviously, is your boss. And having regular one-on-one, -on -one, whether you do this or not with the worker, but during their first relevant onboarding period, um, setting up one-on-one -on -one meetings with the boss goes a long way, where you are giving them feedback, ensuring that your new workers have full team integration, that they've met all the people that they need to meet, and if you have to have a checklist, put your checklist together. Um, connective tissue with the supervisor means it's not just that worker understand what their strengths and talents are and also to be really clear with the worker on what their preferences are and what's important about this I've actually watched new individuals come in and the supervisor gets out of sync with them because there wasn't communication preferences for example, maybe the supervisor is high verbal and they tend to make calls. Maybe the worker that you have tends to live in email or tends to text. And we're all different. That gets impacted by some of us are extroverted, some of us are introverted. Um, some of us process information differently. We'd like to go into a meeting with an agenda. Um, some of us just go off the cuff. Well, getting that calibration so that the supervisor knows their worker and the worker knows the supervisor, I have just seen that you've got a fantastic talent, and because you didn't get the connective tissue with the supervisor, they end up not succeeding, but they, they were perfect for the function of the job. And just a little bit of communication can go a long way. And also understanding the company culture. You know, if somebody is coming in, are you a consensus oriented culture? Are you a hierarchical culture? Do you um, just, are you flat? Do you empower everybody? Is it making decisions and um, coming back and asking for forgiveness? Whatever your culture is, make sure that you have your new person, and obviously you've already um, interviewed them for this, but make sure that they really understand the lay of the land and that they integrate because it does matter. You know, I can tell you with my companies, professionalism matters to me, respect for each person. We have a culture that is a meritocracy. We aren't heavily hierarchical. And having people understand that because if they come in and they're real hierarchical and barking orders, they're not going to fit in our culture and just making sure. Now, obviously, we interview that for that in advance, but I want them to succeed. The other thing is um, I'm a big Gallup um, lover. I'm big on strength finders. So manage the key drivers of engagement. And what that means, make sure in the first 90 days you're telling your new um, team members what it is that they are responsible for and how to be successful. 
give them definitive engagement goals in realistic everyday terms. Set a 90-day plan. Set a 30-day plan. You are to accomplish these things. Make sure that you give them the materials and equipment that's needed. Help them measure progress. That goes back to the supervisor checking in and provide them with opportunities to learn and grow and to ask questions and calibrate back. This is really um, a time when you want to be in very heavy communications with your new workers. Mistakes to avoid that are unfortunately all too common because again, going back to by the time we hire somebody, we needed them yesterday. Not having a clean and ready workspace with equipment. And I can tell you that can be just devastating. Starting a new hire when the supervisor is absent. Now, sometimes this can't be avoided. If this can't be avoided, the supervisor's traveling, have them call on that day. Have them pick up the phone and just say, hey, welcome. And make sure that there is somebody there that day to welcome them. And um, kind of shepherd them through the day because it's a little nerve-wracking. The other um, big mistake you do not want to avoid is introducing them to their coworkers. It is important that they integrate into their work group. Neglecting culture. Um, it's really culture and what are the norms of your organization. It matters. Not providing clear expectations and then not providing support and training. Now, to providing support and training doesn't mean that it has to be formalized. And maybe you are a company that is radically overloaded, like so many today. I mean, in terms of productivity, just find little things where it's snippets. We don't learn, you know, the, the old way of learning and taking in information, taking in smaller bits and applying it is actually how we learn better. And what you can do is set your new workers up with key individuals to show them little bits so that they can apply it and just spread it out, make it easy. So these are really important mistakes to avoid. What I'm going to say to you is um, impacts for hiring new workers and really getting them up to speed and making them successful. Onboarding makes the difference. On top of that, I'm going to tell you that even with executives, the majority of executives that are brought in from the outside leave within the first year to 18 months. And what I know through all the years spending that extra time up front and onboarding can actually have a radical impact on the success of your hire and getting them integrated into your company. So um, I want to thank you for being with us today. Hire Results airs every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can see us on facebook.com forward slash hire results. And if you miss an episode or visit our library with all this great content, um, go to itoiworkforce.com forward slash hire dash results. Thank you again for being here today, and here's to many fantastic, great hires.